Hi everyone, it's Susie here. Dates the 9th of the 12th, 2021, and in Turkey time, Turkish time, it's 17.46 p.m. I think in the Netherlands it's two hours beforehand. So it's 17.46 p.m. in Turkish time, uh, the 9th of the 12th. So let's just have a look at this technically. To me, this market doesn't look very good at all. Uh, there's some big figures out tomorrow. U US CPI for one consumer price index. I'm expecting it to be quite high and quite bad. I do believe interest rates are probably going to go higher. And I'm expecting a bit of a sell-off in the, in the uh, equity market as well. And all those risks that I outlined on, on the 8th uh, of the 12th of podcast for the 8th of the 12th, risks that I see in the cryptocurrency market at the moment, and there are a lot. And to add to those risks, you could also add, uh, obviously, the Iranian story with the US as well. And there was a couple of other risks as well. What else did I have there? Uh, let me just quickly check. Um, also, there was uh, obviously volatility, Fed taper, US economic figures were really bad. Fed hasn't got a clue, clearly. US tether was trading below one, and that's something that can come up uh, early next year in terms of, uh, you know, obviously tether, Inc. and Bitfinex. Uh, that was an ongoing thing about three or four years ago. Biden is administration moving to tighten enforcement of uh, sanctions against Iran as well. Plus, uh, you had the... Uh, Dalio out there talking about a uh, potential war between uh, China and the US, which I thought was quite alarming. But anyway, let's just have a look at the technical story at the moment. Take that down. To me, it doesn't look that great technically, I have to say. And always I look at the four hour, four hour time frame because that's what professional traders like myself look at. And, you know, we, we look at that at the four hour time frame and just look at it in terms of the 200 day moving average. Uh, and uh, a couple of indica indicators that I look at in terms of the pivot points and that sort of thing. And again, we had this big move on Ethereum, uh, which was the 4th, the 12th, and it got all the way down here and, you know, traded back up and then traded back up here. But as we can see, we're getting sells at every level here, sell, sell. And the highs, I have to say, getting lower. Uh, it's finishing on the low with the red here. You can see the green here, but it's still finished on the low. We've got another sell on Ethereum today. Uh, sorry, is this Ethereum? Oh, yes, it is. And if you look at this, it's just moved below the 200-day moving average here at 4302. Uh, and uh, that's not a great story, I have to say. So, uh, you know, it's currently at 4239. We are getting some sell through here. So, you know, we'll cover this back again. But, you know, the chart needs to fill this gap here, um, down to here and it could potentially move down there again. And this is what I'm waiting for. Uh, I'd rather be cautious than get into this market too early. I just don't like uh, the price action at all, I have to say. So it looks like it's going to fill this gap here, right here. So let's go up to uh, ADA. Now, ADA has not played out very well. It's been got to over two bucks, and, and you know what? It's just underperformed every time, right? If it's not the four, uh, four hour, I'll, make, I'll tell you that, but I look at the four hours. So if it's anything different, I'll tell you. Now, the 200-day moving average is very, very important because that means the trend is down, okay? Clearly, the trend is down, as you can see with ADA, right? Straight down. And that doesn't want me to, that doesn't make me want to buy ADA, clearly. Now, you know, in the low of the 4th, 12th, got to $1.21. You know, it got to $1.22. And we've just been given another sell, right? today and uh, again it's way under the 200 day moving average and it's even gone up under the shorter uh, moving average right uh, which is even shorter three and ten so you know again this looks like it's going to be a lot weaker uh, overnight there's some there's some selling coming through and I just feel this market is going to sell down quite quickly tonight I've been waiting for this uh, if we look at Ambrosis and I'm looking at all the coins that or tokens that we buy and it's mainly coins for our trading and investment portfolio. Embraces has done quite badly as well. It's still under the 200 day moving average. We've got another sell on that. It does look like weakness. It could get back down to this level of 0 0.033, 0 0.034. Um, if we look at AST, we've got the same, probably same story, okay? AST did very well, but again, it's under the 200 day moving average. And I don't like it when things are under the 200 day moving average. The trend is down. We can see it on everything here, right? Uh, also got selling volume coming through, quite large selling volume as well. And, you know, some of my indicators down here, uh, you know, are not great either. They're moving up or the ATR is starting to flatline or, you know, there's some extremity. But, you know, a move is coming, people. 
And I think it's going to be a move to the downside and quite a big move to the downside, okay? And that's why I'm being so cautious here. Our risk is if we buy too early, okay, too early, because if Bitcoin breaks 42,000, it could go down a lot early, okay? And the charts are telling me that. Adam, the same story. You know, we've got the sell, massive sell here, massive volume here. You know, got the 2182, 2202. It could head back there or lower. Uh, and again, I don't like what I'm seeing here. Volatility is still through the roof and it doesn't look great. Let's go to audio. Same story. Been getting another sell on audio. Could get down about $1.42, okay? AVEX had a very, very good performance. You know, we've got right up to 127 bucks back here, uh, which was basically at the start of December. And you can see that it's just, you know, every time it's it's getting, we're getting sell, 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 sell. You know, this thing could get down to $76 or 77 from the last low, right? BCH, we've got the same story. I cannot be bullish this market, people. I can't. BCH could go down to 342 or its previous lows, right? Um, I will look at the uh, crypto stocks on the share market. That's also a telling thing, but I want to go through the crypto first, okay? Cryptocurrencies we look at. We look at Binance. Binance has done very well, but look, you know, it's right on the 200-day moving average here. Uh, a break of 581.58, 581.58. It's coming down with volume, and then, you know, she could go back right down to this 492, right? Not a great story either. Uh, let's just go through some others here. BSV, which I, I don't like, and again, we've got the same story. Look, same story, false break, same story down. It's got to fill this gap here, right? It's a big gap to fill down to $78.50, right? The market often retraces and fills the gap, right? Uh, let's have a good, uh, what else we got here? Bitcoin shorts. Let's have a good Bitcoin again. Uh, 48697. Again, we've been given a sell, right? And it doesn't look good. It's got to fill this gap down to 42,000. This is why I'm so cautious, right? Let's get ready. Uh, you know, do all your due diligence on the exchanges and everything else, people, because when this market falls, we will look to buy a little bit, okay? Probably five to 10,000. So get ready for this, but, you know, a, a move is coming and I think it's going to be pretty ugly. That's my view. And that's why I'm so cautious, people, okay? We have to be. If we buy too early, we could get buried, okay, with the train coming down the track. Uh, BT Gold, same story. Got to sell. Volumes coming through. Everything looks the same. Got down to 31 bucks, 31.72. Again, this thing could come down another $12 with no problem. A lot of volatility in some of these cryptos, BT Gold being one of them. BTT, again, even though it's going to its own blockchain, we've been given a sell, sell, two sells here, and it it's crossed down below the 200-day moving average, and we're seeing a lot of volume, Okay. And we're seeing some of these indicators move up quite substantially, getting a lot of volatility in our ATRs, average true range of historical volatilities and the like, okay? Um, let's have a look at Cello. Cello did look good. Uh, but again, as we can see, same picture, sell, sell, right? And everything is below the 200-day moving average on a four-hour. I can't be bullish, people. <clears throat> excuse me, if we talk about sell, huge volume coming through on this at the moment. And again, we've got sell, sell, sell. And we've got this reverse cup and handle. Not a great story. This could go lower, like a lot lower, down to 299, all right? Chile's not good, doesn't look good. We've just been told, given another sell. Everything is triggering a sell at the moment, everything. Crow, which we love, we've been triggered a sell on that today as well. Yes, it's still above the 200-day moving average, but it could retrace down to 50 cents, something like that. I don't want to get into this market at the moment until this market tells me where it wants to go. And at the moment, it's telling me it looks like it wants to go down, right? Uh, CVC, same story. Got to fill the gap here. Could get down to 30 cents, right? Got to fill the gap, okay? Let's go down to Digibyte. Again, same story. Dodge. Same story. Dodge could come down all the way down to 13 cents. Dot then triggered a sell as well, has never recovered. Wow, something, there's some big 
there's a big portfolio being sold today because something's selling this market down, okay? Engine, same story. Plus, we've got the reverse cup and handle. That's not great, okay? We've got this major reverse cup and handle here. We've seen this big drop down, right? And, uh, you know, and again, sign of the 200-day moving average. It's not showing great, uh, you know, technical. Seriously, not a good story. With EOS, the same story. ETC, the same story. We've got cells on everything here. And we have to, you know, be driven by the technicals, okay? Uh, that's the first thing, right? Uh, to get in the market and to even get out of the market. Fetch, which has, you know, been a great story. Got to about 95 cents. You know, it's the low... Lows are getting lower and lower. When you look at the overall picture, everything's being rounded. We're going to get a big move, people, for sure. Flow, FTT, everything's the same, right? Fun. Uh, GRT, boy, looks quite ugly, I have to say. H-bar, hex, which I hate. Hex means witch in Dutch. Hubie token, uh, you know, again, was above the 200-day moving average, a false break, and now we've got this sell, 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 and there's sells everywhere, okay? Icon doesn't look good. IOST, ITX is doing well, but probably one, but then we've got this rounding situation, which I don't like, okay? When you've got this rounding 200-day moving average, it's not a great story, and it's just from literally uh, experience, okay? Reverse cup and handle on just two of those. This thing could go a lot lower as well. Five cents. Qcoin, same story. Just broken the 200 day moving average, could move down to 17, 18 dollars. Link, everything's lower. Everything's lower. Boy, boy, this doesn't look good. We've got some selling here, people. We don't like it. This is going to come back really hard, I have to say. I don't like the look of this at all. Okay, Nexo, we know Nexo buying back their own coin. They're buying at $2.73, right? And even then, it's not enough to keep their coin up, right? And we've got this round thing going. We're going to get a big push down, people, a big one. Ooh, mamma mia. Let's go down. Power, getting more and more volatility, more and more uh, range, range is on true range. Gosh, QNT looks terrible. That thing could really fall out of the water. Everything looks terrible. Reef, quantum, wreck. No, we wait. We wait. Honestly, looks bad. Even Solano looks bad, and it's one of our favourite coins of all. Okay, so let's go to Swipe. Same story. Okay, Tron, which is very cheap. Let's see what that looks like. Again, not very good either. Reverse cup and handle could go a lot lower, okay? Yeah, it's quite alarming. These, uh, something's going to break here and uh, it's going to come, you know, probably with a massive equity market sell-off as well. So I suggest if you're in equities, get out of them now because this market looks very bad to me, okay? Very bad technically, I have to say. Everything we look at, all our prime crypto and blue chips in this market looks a shocker. I would not be in this market at the moment. Uh, even XRP, which, you know, they bought up today, it's we've just been given a sell on that, okay? Still below the 200-day moving average. We also have a reverse cup and handle here, which is quite negative, quite negative. They're increasing their shorts on XRP. Uh, doesn't look good, guys and girls, girls and guys. So if we go back to, let's just have a look at the um, stocks, uh, the shares that are crypto stocks like Bitto looks ugly as Bark, the same thing, really ugly. The Warren on Bark, terrible. What else we got? Coin. Let's check out Coin. Let's have a look at Hood. Same story, ugly. Go away. Market looks terrible. Um, she. Sometimes we have to be patient here. Hood looks really bad. Boy. Don't like it at all, I have to say. Is there any more that we can look at there that are, uh, let me just check this, that are just shares on the exchange which are related to crypto? Bear with me. Uh, I think that's about it. So let's have a look at the equity market now and, uh, you know, let's see what's going on with that. I mean, the equity market was in bull for the last two days, beyond me why, 
near all-time highs and yet every risk metric I outlined to you guys on the 8th, it, you know, it has the potential to bring the equity market down big time. So I'm probably likely going to sell some um, just something, you know, some futures on the equity market tonight. I think it looks like terrible and I think it can come down quite a bit, I have to be honest with you. And normally Friday night is always a big move on the equity market as well and you may get it early on uh, being Thursday, right? So if we go to the Dow here, which is only about 31 stocks, uh, let's just have a look at that. Let's see what we've got there. And again, this is on a four day, okay, uh, on a four hour, I should say. And, you know, we had sell, 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 right? Went right through the 200 day moving average. It's gone up and we still haven't got the sell here. But in my mind, you know, this is where the price section is. This looks pretty ugly. It could come down here very, very quickly, okay? That's my view. I'm, I'm not a believer of this market being up here at all. We've got a double top on this and uh, that's the all-time high up there, around 30, 37,000. And this is just absolute garbology, right? You know, the equity market can do this, but I think this is going to come down pretty heavily, I have to say. If we go to uh, uh, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, we're going to see even more uh, coins in the index, and that's going to give us a better idea as well. So let's go to that one. And again, we're starting to get more volume and more sell down. And I just cannot see this staying up here. I really can't. And I don't know why it's still up here. Obviously, index managers are buying the index, but I just cannot see how this thing is staying up here. It's just beyond me. This thing... I am, you know, it's beyond me how it's staying up here. Let's have a look at the NASDAQ, which I think is even, yeah, the tech index is going to sell off even more because it's very, very expensive at the moment. Uh, and it's up there because obviously tech uh, stocks are up there. Their, their P, P's are through the roof at the moment. Uh, also, interest rates have been coming down, but this is just beyond me. Now, we've got the NASDAQ on a uh, the four hour, the 100. We've got two cells here, and this is like a double top, people. This is absolutely a double top. And this thing could come down, oh, man, a 1,000 points really, really quickly, okay? This is definitely a double top right here. And this makes me very uncomfortable. I would not want to be in stocks at the moment, okay? Definitely not. If we look at the Russell, for example, which is over 2,000 stocks, it gives you even a better picture of what the real market is doing, not just the big caps, the big caps in the indices, right, which are, which are you know, bought by the index managers like uh, Vanguard, for example. So let's check that out. Um, and also we'll look at the uh, Wilshire as well, which is 4,500 stocks. It's normally 5,000, but on this we've got 4,000, which will which we'll do. So what have we got here? Let's have a look at the Russell. And the Russell is more telling people. We've got this sell, 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 bought, sold, Still didn't get through the 200-day moving average on the four-hour, and that's massive. This thing can go a lot lower, and that's with uh, 2,000 stops. So this tells you more about what's happening in the real equity market in the U.S. There's about uh, 10 to half, 12,000 stocks, and this index has got more stocks in them, and this shows you the real picture rather than just some of the big caps that the big fund managers are buying outright, Okay. Uh, this market is going down. I've got no doubt in my mind about it. If we go to the Wilshire, right, which is normally four and a half thousand, well, it's only 5,000. Uh, we, we only have it on there. But, you know, again, this is not great. Oh, I don't have a CFD on the Wilshire. Let me just see if I've got a CFD, which will be the latest, uh, which will be the latest uh, pricing. Uh, I've only got the last night's. Wilshire depends what they've got here in terms of uh, trade station, right? You normally have to get the futures or the CFD. They don't have CFDs. Uh, let's have a see if they've got a futures on the Wilshire. No. Okay, that's unfortunate. The index, we don't have anything up to date. Um, we've got to wait for the market to be open. But look, it looks pretty ugly to me, very ugly indeed. If we go uh, to the interest rates, um, we see volatility is massive, even on interest rates at the moment. I don't like this. Look at this. This is massive volatility, people. You know, seriously, you've even got volatility in interest rates, in treasury notes. Uh, you know, something's going to break here, seriously, and I, I don't like it. And I'd rather be out of this market, right? We don't want to be in this market at the moment because something seriously is going to break here. 
right? Even on the 10-year bond rate in the US, you know, it's been at 170, you know, and we it's suddenly gone through the 200-day moving average, which means yields are moving up, people, up, and that will bring this equity market down, okay? Absolutely. If we go to the 20-year, same story, a lot of volatility, a lot of volatility and 30-year moving up all the way, okay? So this is not a great story. Not at all. Anyway, guys and girls, have a look at this, but it's food for thought. We're going to get a move very soon, uh, probably tonight or tomorrow. Please make sure you've got everything ready to buy because, uh, you know, I think the move is going to be quite a big one and we'll be buying uh, some very, very cheap crypto, but only in small at the moment because I think there might be more sell-off coming in this market. Thanks, everyone, and uh, I'll come back to you with the podcast. Thank you.